Hey guys, it's Mark from Erickson Machine and Performance. Today we're going to go through fixing a GPR 1300. So this is a fellow YouTuber Shady Tree. Uh, he sent it to us to straighten it out. The rod let go. Fairly common issue on these. It broke the ear off the front part. We're going to end up slapping an LA sleeve in it. So I'm going to show you that process. Also, when the crank let go, it cracked the case pretty badly. It actually cracked it through one of the gasket surfaces, which is kind of the worst case scenario, but we're going to straighten it out and get it back together. So I'll show you us cleaning this up, welding it. Same thing with us going through this and machining it. Alright guys, so this is the first pass, so we center the boring bar on the cylinder. After we do that, I really only take, you know, 20 or 25 thousandth pass. All we're doing here is peeling the plating off, and then the rest will be just cutting aluminum. And it'll be way easier. I found if you take too deep of a cut, you really tear up cutters. Um, but you don't want to take too shallow because you want to get under the plating or once again, we're going to destroy the cut. So there we go. We got the first pass done. Now, time to bring that to size and then get ready for the counter. All right, so this is the last bore we're going to do, which will set us to size. Now, these cylinders, the nice thing is, because they're Nicosil, we can actually finish honing them, where like the Yamaha 701, when we big bore them, we really have to bore them perfect to size, because the chamfer, the port openings in the bottom, you wouldn't be able to run a hone through, because we still have solid aluminum everywhere, we can run a hone through it, which just gives us more leeway to get it perfect. So, we're going to leave this five oversize well five undersize from this size so we'll end up being three four eight nine um so actually i have it set three four eight eight focus there we go three four eight eight so we will bore it and then we will hone it and leave it 2,000 smaller than the sleeve when we're finished. Two, two and a half, either is fine. After we do this bore, we will now then machine the counter bore step. That will machine perfectly to size. And then we'll put it in the hone, hone it, heat it up, and slap the new sleeve in it. So let's get this tool in and get the last cut done. little aluminum lube help get a nicer cut all right so now what we're going to do so we have this set up I will go down I will just touch when I touch we'll set this to zero and then we will drop it down to make the cut. So the step on this is 200 thousandths. So we're going to go 196 or so. So leave the sleeve a little proud so we can mill it flat on the top. And let's get it started.
50, 100, then 50, You can see you can see finished counter bore the board now we will chamfer this finish hone this um, the smaller area not the counter bore clean it up and heat it up to install the sleeve all right so now it's counter board and board right now we are five thousandths smaller than the sleeve so we're going to hone it three thousandths which will give us an interference fit of two so as i was saying before we can hone these to size because you have aluminum all the way around if this was a super jet cylinder let me find one so something like this you can't because the stones are just going to get stuck. So these we have to machine exact. Now the reason we add a step on this, when you're boring on a boring bar, it's really only accurate within a thousandth or two, which is accurate enough for when you're boring an engine. The only thing is when you have a two thousandth interference fit, a thousandth or two gets tricky. If you miss, you just scrap the job. So it's easier to give yourself the leeway, hone the couple, and then you're good to go. So let's get this honed, and then we'll get her heated up. Right on the money of two. Right on the money of two. Ready to clean her up and heat her up. On to get her heated up. All right, so what we'll do, we'll take the sleeve, the cylinder is in the grill at the moment. I'm just gonna use a very small amount of sleeve retaining compound. This is more to make sure you don't have any water leaks. Um, just something I've done, works well. All right, grab the cylinder. Now this was heated up to 550 degrees. Get it lined up. 
lined up perfect just like that so I don't do a ton of these 1300, so I'm just using an old blown up dome to hold it. There we go. So now this pressure is just so when it cools, the sleeve can't pop up. And that's really all it's doing. So now this can cool. There we go. Sleeves all installed, ports are all lined up, and then we will take it out and do the final machine work. All right, guys, so here we go. We got it mounted in the good old mill. So we are mounted on parallels, pushing down, you know, where the bolt areas are. Got it held down in four spots, got it flat. So the one thing you have to be careful, which this cutter just clears it, uh, when you're decking these, not to hit the power valve section. So let's get started. So what we're going to do is first we're just going to come over and find out where the sleeve is. So now you can see surfic perfectly, sleeves flat. Now time to finish boring it. All right, so here we go. Last step. Cat's paw centered, locking the bar down. Three point three oh four. Micrometer set, three point three oh four.
so we are back at the honing machine so we are after boring half a thou over piston size which is perfect we're going to set it to four so let's start her up So now I've gone through my hone process before. So I start off with a coarse stone, go to a medium stone, then I chamfer it. I use a ball hone to chamfer the chamfer basically. And then we will use the fine stone to do the last finish. And then we use brushes to help with break in. three and a half on both so now it is time to chamfer time to chamfer as I've said in other videos I use diamond burrs when I'm chamfering Also, when you chamfer, you only have to do the sharp edge. So, I don't know if you can see this in here. So, this front face up, because this is at an angle, it's already chamfered. This front face up, this is already at an angle. Same there. And then the exhaust port. 
Now another step I do is we chamfer the top. There's multiple ways to do that. So I just use a chamfer cone. Just this tool here. You can also I'll have one right next to me. Use a deburr tool. You could even use the diamond burr and just go around real quick. You just want to break that edge so it's not a hot spot. And I'll flip it over. Smooth that transition between the iron liner and the aluminum sleeve. Now the last thing we'll do is the exhaust port. Alrighty, time to finish hone. So it's all chamfered, so now we'll run the ball hone through it, size it, and send it on its way. Alrighty, so now time to run the ball hone through it, which all we're doing now is doing the final deburr. Hold that a little bit tighter. Put 
perfect. Alrighty. Now on to the brushes. Nice and perfect cross hatch, ready to start a new life. So, but that shows the cylinder. I'll show it obviously when it's all clean. But you can now see everything's ported, chamfered, decked, basically as good as new. All right, guys. So now, if we look here, you can see it's kicked out, and the crack all the way around. It has dug the trench deeper on the base. We have to check it and then cracked over here. So you can see my finger on this side. So what we're going to end up doing, we're going to start off by V'ing all this out and cleaning it with a bolted together. Then I'm going to take a hammer and I'm going to try to tap these back closer. After we do that, we'll weld this and when we get all this set, then we'll start working on the bottom. So there's one little kicked out piece over here. So, and we'll get her all fixed up. Now that we got the crack all beat out, I'm just going to clean out around it, get the paint off. So that's a good start. Now the only thing we're going to have to see when I go to weld this, I'm going to tap this in, we're going to weld over here, and then I'm going to have to see, I might have to actually cut this rib out. That's basically back where it's supposed to be. There we go. that 
is basically laying back flat. So now we can get ready to start welding. So as you can see, this is pushed back basically flat that you can't see light through. All right, so here we go. So we're going to start off by welding here to here. We're going to stop before we get near the gasket surface. So I use 4340 for general welding areas where there's not a machine surface that we might have to touch up. Then I use a harder alloy, so I use 5356 for these areas, which when you machine the 53 series, you get a nicer finish. The 40 series, when you machine it, it looks gummy and terrible, so it just ends up being way better. So let's get started. Also, so I have the clamp on a perch that's not used. You do not want to put your ground clamp on a finished surface because it can arc and put a mark on it. Then you have a whole nother issue to deal with. Just like preheat it a little bit first. Just kind of watch over the area and see if there's any trouble spots. So here we are, this is the area that's all welded. So we're going to come down, we're just going to kiss these welds until we get about to touch. And then I will use a polishing stone to make it perfectly flat. So and you can see this is all where it was welded. And then I went back in and cleaned it up with a wheel. Um, and this was all welded back, all this was broken.
right. So there's actually a low spot here. So there's a low spot right here where this kicked down. Now instead of welding this, what we're going to do, I'm going to clean it up right now. We're going to put a little epoxy on it, and then I'll use a polishing stone to get it perfectly flat. Main reason why is if I go to weld this, we're going to lose this bolt hole. So there's really no reason to. And this being, you know, whatever, 10 thousandths worth of epoxy is not going to affect anything, and it'll hold forever. So let's get that set up, and then we will block it, and this thing will be done. All right, guys, here we go. Now we're down to the last step. So cylinder's all done. Cases are all done. The weld's been ground down where it needs to be. Everything's been surfaced where it needs to be. You can see over here, you can see a super thin coat of JB Weld right there and right here. It's only about 10 thousandths thick and then it's blocked down so it's perfectly flat with everything. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use a product, it's called Micro Seal. So it's meant for castings and porosity. So all we're going to do is we're going to lightly paint that on all the welded areas. There's no pinholes or anything like that in it. This is just to an added piece of security that I found works really, really well for beat up castings. Alrighty, so now stuff's really, really easy to apply. This, all you do is brush it on. Just so you know, if you get this stuff, don't use good brushes because the brushes get destroyed after each time. So just... And all this stuff does is it basically soaks into the aluminum and seals all the pores in the castings. Also, if you have like a leaking casting, um, some of the aftermarket manufacturers are notorious for their castings leaking a little bit you can basically use this on those castings and it will seal them up without having to weld everything and fix it. And there we go guys. So this is all done. Ready to go back. So cylinder done, case repair done. Everything's blocked back flat. As you saw, we milled it. And then I use a truing stone after the epoxy's down to get it exactly perfect. And like always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day guys.